Bill Gowdy checking in. Beautiful day. Just a light breeze out of the southwest. It's so nice. I've been getting a lot of work done. I sure have. And I think I think the highs in the 40s. <laughs> and uh, they're forecasting a little rain tomorrow in the morning, I think. But while it's dry, while it's nice, I'm gonna make, you know, you know, I think you guys have all seen my bush beer chili. And I'm gonna do it in the Camp Made Dutch oven. And I had a question from one of my subscribers. He watches and comments a lot, and that's Chuck. And it's MWC and four numbers, I think. And he uh, helped me out when I was in uh, Ohio looking for some uh, 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 bottles of bush. Yeah, he called the distributor. Anyway, uh, long story short, he had a question about my Dutch oven, and I thought, well, hey, I'll, I'll just explain it to you. I, you know, I boiled water, just plain water, in my cast iron Dutch oven. And he said, do you have to re-season it? And I don't, mainly because uh, I use mine all the time. Now, if you don't use it all the time, I would uh, recommend at least uh, putting, just wiping it down with a light coat of oil. Uh, but I, you know, I use mine weekly, at least weekly. I use mine like people use their regular oven. Um, you know, so, uh, but, but I use it for a kettle, I use it for an oven, uh, you know, I do everything with it. <laughs> I want to thank those people at Camp Made. They just make an awesome product. I'll put a link to them down below, and if you put Gaudi 20 in, you get a discount. Can't beat it. All right, well, let's, let's get to cooking, shall we? It, this is uh, deer meat cut up, and all I did was put, uh, Adolph's meat tenderizer in there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that kettle over the fire I'm going to put that Dutch oven over the fire over my tripod and I'm going to brown that and once again I don't have any beef broth but I don't need any uh, I'm going to use the, the deer and I'm going to add a, a 12 ounce bottle of bush beer you'll see and then I have my vegetables already mixed up you got uh, jalapeno nothing real hot uh, three peppers Jalapeno, celery, mushrooms, garlic, yeah, my second head, a whole head of garlic in there. Uh -huh, yeah, and bell pepper, uh, red and green. You'll need a tripod if you're going to cook it like I do. And I've had a lot of questions about that, and that came from the farm store many, many years ago. Now, in my travels, I saw a tripod similar, very similar to that, at Bass Pro in their uh, camping cooking section down downstairs at, at the one in Springfield. Uh, they had a, uh, I can't remember what the price was, but you know, uh, I can zoom in here at the top. All that is is, uh, you know, just bar steel, but you could use re-rod. And they just heated it and bent it and put an S hook in there. So, you know, it's not that hard to make. I think those are about 40 inches long. And I'm going to suspend my kettle uh, from a chain that I've got. And I got it adjustable so I can uh, put it on a chain link. And then I just have one of those quick clasps on there. Uh, a carabiner, yeah, I think is what they call it. I'm going to suspend that out over that. It's about uh, 3.30 in the afternoon, and I, I'm starting this project because uh, I got plenty of things to do. I got more wood to stack and plenty of uh, splitting. And uh, I, I'm going to let this cook all afternoon, you know, because I, I probably, at least three hours, I probably won't eat till uh, 6 or 7 tonight. get it in there without melting the sack.
that deer meat is so lean that uh, I, uh, I put it, I don't know, probably about a quarter cup of uh, peanut oil in there first before I put that uh, meat in there. And now it's, yeah, it's pretty well brown. I like it that way. And now I just pour everything in, including a 12 ounce, you got it, uh, a vessel of amber fluid. Look at the goodness. The secret ingredient. So I plan on getting the priority straight a little bit later, but for now, I'm just gonna add this in there and make my own broth, a venison broth. Yeah, look at that, thank you, Mark. Uh, Crawdaddy, EV Crawfish, Crawdaddy Forge. He built that, it's a knife, it's a neck knife. It's got an opener built right in, and you can use it for a striker, it's awesome. If you want one, I'll put a link. I'll put a link down below. Check him out. Tell him Bill Gaddy sent you. All right. Let's pour that in. Woo. Oh, 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 look at that, man. My veggies, and this has got slap your mama on it. Veggies do. Probably about a tablespoon. The season is the taste. Nothing real hot. Have, uh, jalapeno. I got, I'm going to use some Rotel. It's got some habanero. I use a hot Rotel. And then I like to use Texas Pete. I'm using uh, black beans. And uh, yes, they're high in carb. Uh, but uh, they're high in fiber as well. And um, we talk about glycemic impact. And there's something about beans that, that, that is opposite of potatoes. It causes your body to work to digest them. So it's the, it's the fiber. Uh, they have seven grams of fiber and 19 grams of carb. But so you can't, it's complex carbs. It's not a simple carb. I still limit my bean consumption, but some things just require beans, and this is one of them. And the next thing I like to use is Rotel. I do. This is hot, and it's got habanero in it, so it's got diced tomatoes and and all that stuff. But there's no sugar. It's got three grams of sugar, but that's natural sugars. There's no added sugar to this. <laughs> yeah. Again, complex carbs. Now, I could add this whole bottle. You can use whatever, you, just whatever tomato juice you want, no sugar added or whatever. Uh, I, I like to use at least half of this bottle and sometimes I'll use a full bottle. It just all depends on how runny or how long it's gonna cook. I may add more of this later. We shall see. about half and then I have my choice of adding water or more beer or uh, more tomato juice or, or nothing I, it just all depends on how thick it comes out I'll put the lid on it I'll just let it simmer all afternoon and uh, in about no oh, three hours or so or actually it'll even be better tomorrow <laughs> for breakfast oh man I'm thinking already I'm thinking Low carb tortilla and some chili and oh, and and scrambled eggs and some cheese. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking breakfast. And I haven't had even had supper yet. <laughs> All right. Oh, that looks so good. Sure does. I've added a little light to this situation, and I got a flashlight, and I got a headlight. Maybe that will help. 
I need a low light camera is what I need. <laughs> My camera just doesn't work well under these conditions, I tell you. Let's check that chili out, shall we? Look at this. Can you see that? That's a kickstand. <laughs> Made by camp mate. It's just an awesome little tool. Not only will it lift your lid off your kettle, but it gives you a place to set it down. That is what is nice. <clears throat> oh yeah. Oh ho ho ho. Look at that, will ya? Will you just look at that? Steamed up my glasses. I'm telling you, once the sun went down, it got cold. Can you see in there? Can you see that? Let me see if I can get a lot of light in there. Get something in there for you to see. Look at that. Look. Look at the goodness. Oh. Oh, it's thickening up so nice. <laughs> it's been on about at least three hours. Oh, yeah. You could cook that all day if you wanted to. Oh. I know. I'm going to get some kind of question about the acid in the tomatoes. I have no problem. I have a properly seasoned pan and it just works. It works good for me. And uh, when I'm done with this, I'll rinse it out and I'll just coat it lightly with oil if I need to be. But if I'm going to use it regularly, all I need to do is wipe it out. Oh, look at that. That's just perfect. Let's eat, shall we? Can you see that? Can you see the goodness? Look at the goodness. I just happen to have uh -huh. <laughs> an old Corel bowl here. I've had that bowl for since the 70s. Works out good for this kind of stuff. Look. Oh, look at that. Now, I have a little bit of yeah, homemade grated cheese in here. That's a Kojak. Yeah, let's put a little of that on there. Let it melt in. I think it's time to get the priority straight. Oh, look at that. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. It's been a while since I poured it into a nice frosted mug. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Uh, I think it's 32, 34 degrees. It's only supposed to get down to 32 tonight, uh, which is nice. Can you see that? Can you see into that? Oh. I can't wait to dig in. I'm so hungry. Look at this. Look at these little packets. Rex, the Lone Star Rider. He sent that to me. He was thinking about me. And <laughs> look at that. Oh. I don't know. Can you see that? I, maybe you can't. I don't know if you can see that or not. Ah. Oh. Let's see if that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, it made a difference. Oh, that's so good. Look at the cheese. The cheese is melting. There we go. Oh. I don't know, can you see that fire? Ah, 
That is so good. I'd like to stick around and talk to you a little more, but uh, you're under the lighting conditions and it's so darn dark and <laughs> yeah, I just have to make my videos during the day. That's it. Uh, you know, that's that's where I'm talking about. It's I'm having a hard time getting the lighting right and showing the camp the, the right way. Listen, I'd like to stay and visit a little longer. I'm hungry. I'm tired. Oh, that's so good. But I'm going to do it all again tomorrow. I appreciate you watching. I really do. Mm. Hmm. That is so good. And so is that. <laughs> Bill Gowdy out. celebration. In addition to the best of the stones, we're playing your request tunes as well. 866-989-1975 is the hotline number. And we're rolling out a bunch of Christmas classics and holiday favorites.